Welcome to Aston Martin Mindset. My name is Alex Elaine and in this video, I want to tell you a bit about my story and how it's a great example of the power of visualization and manifestation. So early in my life, I wasn't born into privilege. I grew up in Southeast London in an area called Croydon, spent most of my early life there. And I had a, an absent father, a father that was very in and out of my life. So I was pretty much raised by my mother throughout most of my early life and certainly uh, for the second half and latter part of my life. So things were tough. Money wasn't easy to come by. I, I remember several times uh, things where, for example, I'd be at home and the, the electricity would just go out. Uh, and we didn't even have five pounds to be able to get the electric back on. So we'd light the whole house uh, with candles uh, and live in the darkness for periods of time. I recall eating corned beef and rice because it was the, the cheapest thing uh, that we could afford to be able to really get through. And I remember times also sharing a single bed living in the office in the spare room of my aunt's house. So the times weren't easy. So from a very young age, I found myself being really entrepreneurial. I was the, the kid on the playground that would go to the corner shop, buy some sweets for one price, resell them uh, for more. And when I got to age 13, I actually set up an eBay store uh, where I would refurb refurbish uh, phones. So I'd buy damaged phones get them refurbed and then sell them with markup. And then I started getting into other things, things like drop shipping, uh, where I had a good little run. I'd create e-guides and pretty much just finding many different almost side hustles and finding a way to make money and create some form of margin. Uh, so I was super, super ambitious, always had this burning desire to, to go out and achieve greatness. And I think part of that came from having that, that absent father in my life and also money uh, not really being easy for us. I always wanted to become wealthy and, and, and grow in my life. So if I fast forward uh, towards getting to university years, I was a promising student and I was recognized by uh, a certain association as one of the most promising black students in the country here in the UK. And as a part of that, I then got awarded a full scholarship study in corporate law. Now, this was a huge opportunity. The, the scholarship was worth £30,000. Uh, it, it felt like really to my family the, the thing that could get us all out of the, the struggle in a way and uh, put me in a position where I could set up my future to then be able to help my family moving forward. So it was a huge moment, huge opportunity. I, I grabbed it with two hands, even though there was something inside of me that felt like this wasn't really my true calling. I didn't feel like it tapped into that entrepreneurial flair that I had when I was younger. And I really just wasn't passionate about becoming a lawyer. It wasn't what I wanted to do, but regardless, I went with it because again, it felt like the thing that I had to do to make that difference for myself and my family's future. So I, I did it a few months in, I, I immediately felt that it just wasn't for me. And once it got to the eight month mark, I, I decided again to all lots to, to drop out and gave up on the scholarship and I'd set out this plan. I'd, I'd gone out and spoke to uh, a lot of different CEOs and people in privileged positions that I'd been reaching out to on LinkedIn and through my network. And I really realized that a sales career was my thing. I was always passionate about tech when I was younger. Um, I knew that I had that entrepreneurial flair and I was just great with people and being able to, to drive transactions. And I felt that was where I wanted to be. So I went out and got a job as a, a BDR, what's called a business development representative. My starting salary was 18,500 pounds. And then I had a travel allowance of 4,500 pounds on top of that. And then my on target earnings on any given year was 35,000 pounds, which meant that as long as I hit my target and did what I needed to do through commissions and bonuses, I would earn 35,000 pounds. Now at that age and all those years ago, that was really good money for a first job. And where all of my friends and peers were at university studying, I was out there earning money. And because I had this chip on my shoulder from when I was younger, not having my father around, uh, wanting to earn money and then dropping out of university. Again, I had this chip on my shoulder that I felt I wanted to prove something to the world 
wanted to prove something to myself and to my family. So I crushed several company records in my first week at the business. I set a record for the most amount of appointments booked in a single day where I booked 10 appointments for more senior sales executives. And the previous record was about half of that in the business. I got given box, uh, box tickets to go and see uh, my team Arsenal uh, as a result of that and several other accomplishments that I had at that particular company downward uh, early in my career. And then really year on year, I just continued to level up. I went from being a, a BDR to what's called an account manager, where I started to look after existing accounts. And then I went back into what we call new business, where your focus is much more chasing down to try and win net new accounts and win net new customers. And I started to really climb company on company, made that pivot into software sales. And then year on year, went from a junior sales exec to a senior one, to an enterprise one, to a strategic one, and then eventually found a home in leadership, which is what I do now. I, I made the leap from what we call first line leadership, where you're looking after a, a direct field sales team, to now second line leadership, where you actually look after managers or look after sales directors, and they then look after the direct field team. So that's why we call it second line, because you're two steps away from the field. Now, when I reflect over my life and my, my future, I should also add a bit about my lifestyle. You know, now I live in my dream apartment in the city, something that I, I always visualized when I was younger. I knew I wanted to live in the best type of accommodation. I wanted to be surrounded by elite people. I wanted to be wealthy and I wanted to be able to put myself in a position where I could impact millions, billions of people change my family's life and also uh, really transform the, the, the future uh, that my future family will have and uh, generations to come ultimately. I knew that was always what I wanted to do. So uh, from a, a young age and an early stage, I had this visual, I obsessed about it every single day. Uh, I never stopped thinking about that. And what I found is that over the years, I've, I've manifested and brought to the forefront all of the things that I believed because I had a vision, I set out a plan and then I took massive action to make it happen. Now I still have so much more to achieve and massive things that I've got as I think ahead about where I want to live and eventually where I want to be and the people I want to surround myself with and the difference that I want to make for my family and also for the world. You know, one of my mantras, I want to positively impact a billion people I want to do that through software sales and my personal brand. I want to speak on massive stages. I want to take my income to the millions per month and really go out there and, and, and do some transformative things to really leave all of the cards I have on the table uh, before I eventually sign out of this thing called life. So, so, so much more to do. But I hope through my story and this summary that it encourages someone out there to really dream big, visualize big, but complement that with taking massive, massive action. I didn't have a great start in life. I didn't have a special start, but what I did have was an incredible mother, uh, some great people around me that I rallied over time, but I believed in me. I bet on myself and I've always believed that I was destined for greatness. So do the same for yourself, back yourself, believe in yourself, put yourself in a position where you set out a vision, create a plan, take huge action and believe that you can make a difference. Make sure that you've got a compelling why. What is your chip on your shoulder? Do you want to make a difference for your family, for yourself? Is it something else? Connect with that, obsess around that, and really go out and make a difference. Every so often I'll do videos like this, just a pit stop around the progression that I'm making and how I'm continuing to climb and elevate. As I said, there's so much more to do and some incredible goals and records that I'll be breaking through over the coming years. So stay tuned. Appreciate your support and I'll see you on the next video.